Today's session will be Elevate Your Value Through PR and Social Media. It's presented by Glenn Gray and Tomas Silvani. Uh, at Buffalo since 2010, Glenn oversees high-profile industries association partners such as Golf Course Superintendent Association of America, Massachusetts Golf Association, Steel Sports, Top Golf, United States Golf Association, and U.S. Club Soccer, We Are Golf, World Golf Foundation, and Youth on Course, to name a few. Prior to joining Buffalo, Glenn held sports marketing positions with Nike, Octagon, and Junior Sports Corporation. He's a member of the Forge Communication Council and contributor to the Sports Business Journal. Glenn serves boards for Virginia Commonwealth University Center for Sports Leadership, University of Mary Washington College of Business, the first tee of Greater Washington, D.C., and is co-chair of the We Are Golf Millennial Task Force. Tomas is the integrated marketing manager for Buffalo Agency. He has extensive experience in multi-channel marketing and strategic communications, uh, communications management at local, national, and regional levels. In his role, he's responsible for creating impactful, broad awareness campaigns by inspiring creativity, connecting people, and turning ideas into action. So if you would, please welcome uh, Glenn Gray and Tomas Savani. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Glenn. Excited to be here. This is my seventh STMA conference, so see some familiar faces. And we know you have a lot of options for different sessions this morning, so we appreciate you being here with us uh, today. We've got... Uh, before I really get going, can the folks in the back hear me okay? Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, for the next 60 minutes or so, we've got uh, a lot of things we want to discuss uh, specific to PR and social media, but more so your brand. And that's where we're going to spend a lot of time today is the opportunity to spend time on your personal brand as it pertains to your position within your company and the role that you play in the sports turf industry. So uh, really excited to dive into some, some topics. Um, to the point on some of the recordings, we actually encourage you to be live tweeting and to be posting to social media. So if we see you out on your phone, we won't be uh, disappointed. We won't think that you're not paying attention to us. So uh, feel free to take advantage of those opportunities as, as we go through uh, this presentation. So when we... Hello, hello. Okay. So when we think about investments... Overall, when you see your, your facility invest in their playing surface, in overall stadium operations, in different areas of their overall business, obviously in, it, with the end goal of making more money, more profit, you also have to think of, of your brand as an investment and thinking what steps do you have to take in order to increase your value, increase your salary, increase your presence within the industry, within your organization. So we wanted to start off. There's with a video that you can't hear. <laughs> Who here is familiar with TED Talks? Who's, who's watched TED Talks? It's become very popular, probably a lot from seen now the TEDx that you'll see in your community. And, and we value these a lot because they're really kind of in-depth stories about uh, specific industries, but more so very detailed stories. And that's ultimately what you'll hear us talking a lot about today is storytelling. As an industry, there are, this industry specifically, there are so many unique stories to be told. Every single sports field, every individual has a unique story to be told. And how you tell those really helps to raise the awareness of the industry and, again, your personal brand. When your share price so uh, is low, will find we you often refer to these when, when working with our In partners, short, working with different clients, rent, working with different industry you. associations. These become just a wealth of knowledge for us to be able to kind of tap into individuals and their personal Very experiences. Simply, your personal experience, we, we feel as though, and again, do this is Do and say tough. when they come into contact Thank with you, Glenn. you or your good. name. That's good. good. That's a good teammate That's right there. That's a good name. That's people talking about you when you're not there. I'm going to start it over. I'm going to start okay it over. with people talking about you when you're It's very simply, a reputation is what people see, feel, think, do, and say when they come into contact with you or your name. That's your good name. That's people talking about you when you're not there. Are you okay with people talking about you when you're not there? Or would you rather not be talked about? Your reputation is your personal share price on the stock market of life. 
It's that little piece of real estate in people's minds that they occupy thinking of you. And it's very hard to get a bit of that. When your share price is high, people will find you, invest in you, look for you. In short, your reputation is your rep, which is the reason everyone pays. There's three things we want people to pay us. The first thing is we want people to pay us attention. We know about how much clutter there is. How do we get noticed? How do we clamber above all of the dross that is out there and get people to say, I'm just a little bit different and I'm the one that you want? We want to solve the tyranny of choice which says when people need what you do, how can you ensure that they pick you first above and beyond all of their other choices, including the choice to do nothing? The second thing we want people to pay us is respect. And that looks like people supporting you and encouraging you and paying you a fair day's wage for a fair day's work. It means people defending you if you're attacked. It means people treating you nicely. And when you have a good name and a good reputation, you will get the respect that you deserve. And the third thing we want people to pay us is money. The bigger your reputation, the more you will get paid. That's the way it goes. So some initial feedback, thoughts with respect to this gentleman's comments as, as it relates to reputation, reputation management, what it means to be uh, a practitioner of your, yourself. Uh, what did you guys think if, uh, generally? Is this something that you guys already recognize, value, or see that the, the more that we invest in ourselves... Uh, the higher probability that we're going to get paid a little more. Is this uncomfortable? I think it's, it's primarily uncomfortable because as an industry, you know, uh, the best day is one when they don't talk about us. And the field is immaculate, no one gets hurt, and it may be counterintuitive to what we're asking you to do is maybe counterintuitive to your style. Um, but nobody is going to advocate as well as you are for yourself. And you have to recognize that sometimes you have to get out of that comfort zone to see how to expand your reputation. You had a question. I didn't have a question. I was just going to say that, that it speaks to the difference in the organization between making a good job versus doing a good thing. Did everyone hear that? I'm, I'm come to you because some folks didn't hear that in the back. Can you come in? I just said I think it speaks to the fact that um, the difference between your organization thinking that you do a good job versus that you are a leader uh, for that organization. And that means having a seat at the table, not being a, a yes man, a yes ma'am, uh, that rather than being told what to do, you can offer advice, suggestions, uh, being seen as, as who you want to be seen rather than how they see you. And we use the term subject matter expert, that uh, as you position yourself as a leader, you become a subject matter expert within your company, within your community, within your industry, within all of those areas that you're touching within your day-to-day -day job. You know, the one thing that I was at a presentation this week in Orlando, one of, the, one of the comments the presenter made that I, that I really took away, it was one of the few takeaways I took from this presentation, it was a very impactful presentation, so much information, and I walked away. And the one thing that I noticed was today, right now, this moment, January 23rd, 9.40 a.m., is the slowest time technology will change right now. So tomorrow... Technology changes a little bit faster. Next week, next month, next year. You think about today, where we're living, what we're doing is moving so fast. And if we don't take the opportunity to embrace it, specifically social media, we will continue to fall behind as an industry. We will continue to fall behind as individuals. We will continue to fall behind on taking advantage of our own brand. And so if you have not embraced social media in 2019, Today's the day. And if you do embrace it, but you're a lurker and you kind of do it, but you kind of don't, again, today we're going to spend a lot of time doing it. Your colleagues are doing it, whether you know it or not. They're embracing it. Individuals, organizations, different types of social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
That is the easiest way to be able to start to build your own personal brand within the industry. Because we're always connected 24 hours a day, whether it's email, your phone, text messages, you can either go against the current or with the current. And these are, again, three great examples of individuals who recognize uh, Boyd, who's a rep at uh, Toro, and says, you know what? I have a voice, I have a reputation, and I want to build that. I want to build my own reputation so I'm known for much more than just commercial partnerships. Uh, the, him sharing these type of philosophies on, on Twitter is a great example of someone who, who really embraces it. Um, obviously, you see these other two that, that share the love of, of, of what they're doing. Uh, Christian is a great example. He says, if you don't showcase what your facility is doing, what your employees are doing. How, are they, how is anyone supposed to know that you're the greatest? That when you're applying to the job, you're gonna go, your resume is going to go right to the top. You won't do that unless you advocate for yourself and for your employees. And again, this is three great examples that are that. Boyd works really hard. This tweet is from 4.08 a.m. This guy doesn't sleep. <laughs> it's scheduled. <laughs> yeah. So also your bosses are taking notice. They're also on social media. Whether it's the organization you work for, and it could be Parks and Rec, high school, it could be youth sports, it could be college, it could be professional. They're taking note of the field. Usually earlier in the game day to kind of prepare the fans, the the audience that this game is this happening, this event is happening. But also, now, right next to it, here's the owner of the Miami Dolphins posting about the field. So they want to welcome that audience into their home. And this is all the hard work that's been taking place since the last home game. But they're sharing it on social media. And that is something that you as an individual have had a very important impact on. Tim, you're standing up, so I'm going to call you out on it. Um, When you think of Iowa State and the athletic director, what's their number one asset? Say the field. (laughs) <laughs> without their pride and joy and, and Tom is the owner of, of the Mi- Miami Dolphins without the field in tip top shape they can't generate more events they can't generate fans to come and share interest for the Dolphins so they're really protecting their investment and as we uh, first mentioned our first slide is how they're investing their time and they're showcasing it look at the hard work that Without you sports turf managers, they can't achieve these beauty shots and can't welcome, hey, we're ready for, for the game. Um, so that's why when the Miami Dolphins showcase how they're ready, you need to think and change the mindset that may be uncomfortable for yourself as well on social media, whatever platform, is to do the same and think the same way of saying, you know what, thanks to my hard work, thanks to the team's hard work, the field is ready. The team is ready to receive all our fans and players. So today, you know, the objectives really are kind of threefold. Uh, to learn how to communicate, for those that may not be able to read in the back, to learn how to communicate with your employer and turn them into a sports turf advocate, to understand how PR and social media are used to communicate your story, and then lastly, to develop a proactive approach to maximizing your positive impact among your colleagues. So in order to do that, let's first get back to basics. How do we define public relations? To you, what is PR? Essentially, for, for us and for myself, it's uh, making sure that, um, that we're communicating properly who I am, who we are as an organization with, with, uh, with our community. Generally agree, disagree, have another take on what PR means? Fan, the brand, and the revenue. Okay. The fan, the brand, the revenue. I think it's primarily building value in for what you do. I didn't do it. So the the perception. These are all great points when you think about what PR is. Maybe because the clicker's in my pocket, it's doing that. 
PR is exactly that, is brand management. How do you protect your brand, your assets, whether it's as an individual or as an organization? When you look at these two products, one's Cascade, the other one Dawn, what they're known for may not be for how well they work, but how others, thinking about the reputation, what type of reputation they have within the industry. And the way they do that is with that seal of approval, the good, good housekeeping green. When you see it on the shelf, say, you know what? This is proven, trusted by someone else rather than myself. So you know you can trust those individuals. So what, the way we want to shape your, your thought process is we're building our own brand of approval through the work that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So when they talk about the reputation, when, they're, when you're not in the room and they're talking about you, you have that stamp of approval. And that's really what PR is. It's brand management through conducting interviews, through writing uh, an article on Sports Turf Magazine, all these different ways that we have an ability to influence what others think of us. And whether positive or negative, we want to help shape that narrative rather than have someone else do it for us. So in order to protect and promote your brand, there are a few things that we'd recommend doing. And, and the next slide is going to be don't. And pictures are encouraged if you have a phone. So plan. Predict and prepare for any eventual potential. It's not when something's going to happen. It's not if something's going to happen, it's when something's going to happen. So the more that you plan out exactly how you go about structuring your reputation management, the better. Um, you need to understand that reputation management and crisis control is something as part of our day-to-day -day lives. We can be in any type of different industries, but it's going to happen. Third bullet is, is easy for us. Just stay humble and show authenticity. Um, we as a group understand not wanting to be in the spotlight. Uh, and when praise is given, said thanks, but I'm, I'm just doing my job. Uh, and frankly, build awareness around non-traditional events at your facility. A lot of times it's, it's a heartache when we have so many events piled on, piled on, that you can't even let the turf uh, rest adequately for the next event to go on. But showcase, similar to what the, Dolphin, what the uh, Miami Dolphins owner does, is, hey, look at how versatile we are as an individual. We're just not taking care of, the, of mowing the lawn, getting on a tractor. We're doing so much more. And again, this all builds up to your reputation of what you do uh, to build more credibility about yourself. Some things that you don't want to do. Don't be reactive. Don't be tough and rigid or unresponsive. When someone shares ideas with you, be receptive. Think about it. When, if, you're on, if and when you're on social media, Look at other people's best practices. Learn from one another. That's why as a community we're so strong because through STMA, through our own personal networks, we get to bounce off so many ideas off one another, so we shouldn't be ignoring them. Don't take a stand on things that are larger than your organization or your personal self because the more we veer off our long-term goal, we can just taint our possibilities for... Someone may be looking at things and not agree with your position, so just back off. Even though you may, may want to, just, just let it go. And don't let, again, let competitors control your message. The more that you manage your communication style, what you want the people to say doesn't allow others to say it for you. Did you guys hear that in the back? Great. Well, I think there's a couple different ways to approach it. Uh, you're speaking specifically to a social media post, and then somebody responds to it. So, if, if, so again, so the question is, social media post, you put up something that's very positive, and you get a negative response. For me personally, I like to take the higher road. If you start to engage with that individual, that's what they want. They want to stoke that fire. And especially if you're 
at a bigger organization. It could be a media member. It could be a fan that's trying to elicit a response that all of a sudden becomes into a much bigger story that doesn't need to be. So be confident with your messages. Be confident about what you're posting. You know, it's, it's, I, you know, we may not be in front of a computer all day, but when you're posting that content to your social channels, read it, reread it, double check it. But if you post something and then something negative comes up and then all of a sudden you delete it, you never know if they've already screenshotted that and then they're saying, okay, what are they trying to hide? You know, the worst thing you could say too, and this is also specific to media interviews, is no comment. You say no comment, Right, that, that to me is like, okay, maybe they're hiding something. So be confident in the message that you're putting out there. You will have detractors. You will have people that will try and, you know, get a response out of you that maybe is not what you'd like. So me personally, I, I don't respond to negativity. I just think that we've all lived very, very busy lives, and I like to focus on things that are positive. And look, you're gonna, there are Internet trolls everywhere. You can, they, they will find, and what they're trying to do is spark a reaction from you. And Glenn said it, and I totally agree with him. Is let it go. Take the high road. There's much more positive people out there than negative. Um, and the more you're assertive with what you're putting out there, saying, you know what, the rest will figure itself out. Cyberbullying is a real thing. I mean, it's, it is. So, yeah, be careful. Um, employer communication. So, uh, again, for the folks that can't, I'll just read through these real quick and we'll talk a little bit about each. Offer your boss or, and or communications lead the chance to shadow you for a day. Has anybody thought about that? Has anybody actually gone to the individual? Raise a hand. Okay. Probably 5% of the room. All right. That, that's an easy one, right? Open, make, it, make yourself available to them so they get a better idea of what you do on a day-to-day. -day. I think they're going to learn a lot. And what they may take away is, why is this not part of my marketing communications plan? Why are these stories that I'm not thinking about regularly, these outside the game type storylines? Discuss your role in traditional PR and media relations. Be prepared to share why the sports turf angle is important. Number one, it's safety. It could be a recruiting tool. There's a lot of benefits that your position and what you do for the organization is valuable all the way up to the CEO, the executive director, whoever that lead person is in the organization. One thing that we, we didn't put in here, but it falls within that third bullet, is when a media outlet does cover your facility because you've done something different, share that with your boss. You know, the, the squeaky wheel always gets the oil. If nobody knows about all the great things that you're doing in the publicity, how do you expect their repu your reputation, their image of you, change? It won't. Because if they don't hear from all the great things that you're doing personally, you get a, an article in the, in the newspaper, on TV, forwarded, hey, boss, thought you might enjoy this, how they're, they're showcasing your facility. Um, so again, they see all the work that you're doing on their behalf. Because ultimately, it looks good on them. The AD loves seeing their, their uh, facility showcased on TV, on the newspaper. And, and you're their strongest asset. So, and, and from the marketing and PR communications professionals within your organization, and we get it, there's some that are very small, some that may not have a dedicated person, maybe it's part-time on what they do, and then others that are at the, at the college and professional level that have big, robust departments. You still need to find ways to communicate what you're doing internally. Because ultimately, if they start to share with others within the organization, it helps with the awareness of, of what you're doing. So the employer communication, that internal communication, is critical. It, it shouldn't always be from the top down. It should be from the bottom up. Share what you're doing. Um, think about what differentiates your facility and why media should care. Go to those marketing pro communications professionals within your organization and share with them angles from time to time. Here's something that we're doing. Here's something that we're thinking about coming up at this particular event. Here's how we're managing this challenge. Here's a success story of some things that we did. Always be willing to share that information. Um, and then lastly, offer thought leadership and award opportunities which could lead to media inquiries. And, and Tomas will go later into the presentation to uh, some specific success stories. And those opportunities where you are being recognized by an outside organization, a media outlet, a community uh, group, whatever it might be, that ultimately provides more praise and more awareness to your business as a whole. And your colleagues, your employers, they will take notice. So PR, why is it important? We've talked about the definition of PR,
but it ultimately creates positive awareness for your organization, being proactive. Reactive is not good. <laughs> Knee-jerk, having to deal with uh, comments. Again, Tomas talked about it earlier. Control the message. Be out in front of it. Be willing to, to make yourself available to your internal communications department and then ultimately allow them to make you, you available to speak with local media. Right? It, it does start with local media. You're not going to all of a sudden get a story in the New York Times or on NBC National. It may start with a local story in your local newspaper, a blog. could be a social media influencer. We see that the importance of that nowadays. Um, it draws importance of the safety of the field and making sure that organizations know that there's an STMA member that is employed here, that there is a professional who went to school, who studied for this, who continues to educate themselves, who has gone through rigorous certifications to be able to manage this field. And that is where the perception of this industry needs to continue to evolve. It creates opportunity to reach beyond your organization's target demographic. So as those stories begin to fill up, there's now an opportunity to, cre to create more of a widespread awareness of what you do for the organization and, and how you're having an impact both locally, regionally, and potentially nationally. Allow others to advocate on behalf of your facility for a genuine and authentic message. Again, your message is important, but when other leaders in the, in the, in the community, media members, colleagues, friends of the industry, when they start to tell your story, boy, that becomes even more important. That becomes even more critical uh, to begin to continue to, to generate awareness. And again, it goes back to that seal of approval that we talked about those brands. Why are they so important and powerful at, at frankly, selling? Is because when you go at, at, to that aisle at that grocery store, um, at the convenience store, you already know that someone else has provided validation. So if we, as individuals, l looking back at what we want to accomplish is increasing our value, our net value, is you want others talking about you on your behalf. It's much stronger than if he talks about me rather than me talking about myself. And you should know who those key people are that, are, that could potentially tell your story. And you should start to try and create a relationship with them. You should know in your local community who typically writes about sports, sports editor, maybe there's a specific beat reporter for soccer or lacrosse or baseball or football. You should know who these individuals are. You should follow them on social media. You should begin to develop a relationship with them. That is very important. Not knowing who those individuals are, it's going to be that much tougher to be able to create a conversation, eventually a story that they would be telling about you. So PR, what is required? Who handles the media relations in your organization? If you don't know who that individual is, I would make a note and, and ultimately try and connect with that person uh, as soon as you return from this, org, uh, this, this conference. Uh, schedule a meeting with them. Start to brainstorm ideas. They may be thinking about ideas that are maybe not in line with what you would like to share with media to outside organizations, to outside media. Um, so definitely s sit down with them. Have a healthy discussion. What are things that are important to the organization? What are important to you? And what are things that can then be shared externally? Make yourself available for media training and interviews. There's opportunities that are through STMA that are available. Uh, you all are already taking a first step by participating in this, this session this morning. But position yourself as a local regional expert. We talk about subject matter experts in being able to position yourself. So now, when you've made yourself available, you've participated in media interviews, and that media member is working on a really tight deadline, they know, I'm going to go to Tomas because he was responsive. He got me the information I needed. It was super helpful in my story. And it may only be a quote that's within that story. But now, all of a sudden, you start to become their go-to source on sports turf, on field safety, whatever those particular topics are. And before you go on, I want to be, I want to stress something that, that you discussed earlier. This goes against our grain. I get it. So what these are, the, the ideals that we'd love for everyone leaving this room to do every single day. But we know that it's a process. We know that we need to get you comfortable doing these things because you may not um, be 100%, but we feel that it's important to say, hey, at the 100% ideal, this is what we'd love. So at least if, if you can start taking small steps towards achieving that is, is ultimately where we want to see each and every one of you guys. And these conferences are certainly an important element to them is networking and understanding and there are quite a few people, and this has happened over the course of many years and in the role that we've played with the organization, but 
There are a lot of individuals who have done exceptional things with media in terms of participating in media interviews and very impactful publicity results. So seek out those individuals while you're here in Phoenix. Uh, whether Tim Van Lu liked it or not, when he was president, we set him up with a significant amount of interviews. And again, there were times where it may have not have been comfortable, but preparing him for those types of opportunities uh, was critical to, to not only his brand and the organization that he works for, the university, but also the industry as a whole. So look for those individuals within the, uh, within the STMA, uh, the conference, that you can converse with or even connect with after the conference. Um, and then lastly, leverage recent media coverage. There are topics that may not be 100% focused on sports turf, but there are opportunities where you can be inserted into that conversation. So think about those different topics that are happening locally, regionally in your community. Maybe there's a school that's thinking about going from natural grass to artificial turf or vice versa. How can you be a resource to those media? For the media that actually, the stories that actually are placed and they are, they are featured, are there additional follow-up stories that could be taking place? And, and a good example, to your point, uh, can you tell me your name? Uh, Martin. Martin. Uh, that Martin shared is, you know, what about the naysayers? Mark. 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 Sorry, Mark. Now his name's Martin. Uh, so going back to, hey, what about the naysayers? If you see a story on Twitter about a field renovation that's happening or um, a problematic field in, in your local community, you see it on Twitter that a reporter uh, tweeted about it, you as a sports turf professional can respond to her, him or her, and say, hey, I'd love to give you my thoughts. I'm trained. I'm certified. Let me give you some reasons why I believe this happened. So that, again, gives you credibility. Rather than just providing a comment saying, let me provide a comment and context because I can actually be a resource for you, a subject matter expert. So we've been fortunate enough. This was actually my college playing field. Wow, that is a throwback picture right there. University of Mary Washington, Freshburg, Virginia. Um, so Buffalo PR Resources, we've been uh, uh, fortunate enough to have been partnering with STMA for many years now, and as our roles continue to evolve as PR and social media have evolved, um, you know, we, we want this group to know and the industry as a whole that we are here as a resource. We are here to help you through those conversations. You shouldn't be doing those alone. Uh, there will be opportunities that are very positive, and the story going into it, you feel very comfortable, and then there will be some that are not so comfortable and they're a little bit more challenging. So how can we help? We have the ability to review those media opportunities, work with that media member, gather sample questions, and then work with you to draft sample questions uh, or, or sample uh, talking points. Um, with that, we have kind of a general one to two sheeter that we often prepare and send to uh, the STMA member once they notify us of a media interview about just kind of some, some basic tips, some things that we would recommend that really feed into professionalism. Um, making sure that you're prepared accordingly for that media interview, whether it's on camera, on air, or if it's just a conversation over the phone or in person with a media member for a story that may be featured later on. We can help to supply industry data, statistics, and other thought leadership content. So take that little story about that, that community feature and how does that become much bigger? How does it tie into, this is a massive industry. There are a significant amount of playing fields that play a critical part to a $15 billion youth sports industry, to a multi-billion dollar collegiate professional industry. We have a very important role as sports turf managers, and sharing that data continues to position you as a subject matter expert. We talked about the media engagement strategy. Again, this is something that uh, it's very basic. Some of it you probably already do, but it's just some helpful tips and reminders. And then it allows us to advocate on your behalf to focus on maintaining your facility while ensuring your story is told. We know that you all have a variety of tasks within your day-to-day -day job. So thinking about where you can be featured in media is probably not the top priority. And we get that. So we're always looking for those stories that we can go to media and tell on your behalf. Because, again, that goes back to the authenticity. If you share a story with us, hey, this is something that we're doing at our facility or something that's happening in our community, and we think it's really important, Share with us. Allow us to work our network of media professionals to then share that story and begin to position it as a potential publicity hit. And, you know, there's 2,700 members, and we are a team of – our Buffalo is 55 people plus, but we can't – we don't have eyes and ears 
across the nation, across the world. So a little bit of, of the onus, and we need your help, is you need to tell us, hey, this is cool, uh, this is happening at my facility, look at what I did, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because I may have no idea what, what some of you are, are doing on a day-to-day basis, but every single one of you have an important and interesting story to tell. So if we don't know about those stories, it's going to be challenging to be able to speak on your behalf. Just a, a quick question for the group. How many have participated in media interviews? Raise your hand. Okay. How many have been local media interviews? How many have participated in more than five media interviews? Okay. Any, anybody that's participated in a national media interview? Okay. Good. So every year, STMA puts, conducts uh, several events, obviously com- contests, to generate and, and share not only um, how, how beautiful some fields look, but take that as an opportunity to educate the general public about what sports turf managers do on a day-to-day basis. And I wanted to share one example of this past year. The Stars and Stripes contest is, was a um, about two-week-long contest that generated 11 media placements from uh, National NBC, Minor League Baseball, 33 uh, media posts, and it reached about 55 million people. Why is this so important? Because we want to extend the reach of what you guys are doing on every day. So this um, also lends itself as an opportunity, and I'm going to transition into uh, something that we did last year. We gave a very similar presentation last year, and we take the feedback from your surveys very seriously. And one of the uh, recommendations were, hey, why don't you give us what would be really helpful is why don't you share an example of an STMA member who's, who's really taken this by the bull, by the horns, uh, and gone out there, put themselves out on PR and social. And we thought of, and we, we tapped Tim. Tim Van Loo uh, worked very closely with us. Um, and to, to share a little bit of, of his insights, working from a few years back when he did his first interview uh, and what his role is today and, and how he, he decided to look at social media, PR, uh, and really be an influencer in that space. I'm going to turn his volume up. So. No, no, I'm going to do it from right here. All right, you're good. So I don't know if I can do all of what he just asked me to do. <laughs> so I'll give you a little bit of background of when I decided to get on social media. Um, I uh, was part of the board meeting that decided to hire Buffalo. Um, it would have been six years ago. It was my first year on the board. Knew nothing of what uh, the STM was really about at the time. It was, our, it was our summer board meeting in Chicago. And I remember it, and, and there was a conversation within that that made me want to be a part of something bigger than, than myself, and that was our industry, okay? And really what happened was the understanding, the reason we were hiring a PR firm is because nobody knew what the STMA did, right? We keep pounding the drum, but nobody was hearing it. And a lot of it is because we are behind-the-scenes people. I prefer to be behind-the-scenes. Actually, I don't. I mean, I don't necessarily dislike being up here right now, but I don't necessarily enjoy it either. But <laughs> the Twitter for me, so that was when I decided to do a Twitter account, and I, I actually went back and I actually had my crew help me because they were much more savvy with it and all. Um, and what is that? <laughs> so, so what we did is we developed a Twitter account that was Cyclone Turf, okay? And the idea was it, it was not necessarily to educate all of you on what we do. It was to educate our fans. We're blessed in Iowa, at Iowa State, to have a ridiculous amount of fans that are crazy about cycling sports, okay, mostly football and basketball. And so when I started just basically showing what we did as a, as a staff, it kind of took on a whole lot more than I ever anticipated and it kind of goes up by 500 to 1,000 followers every year, well, more like 500 probably on average. And it's been a lot of fun to get a lot of feedback from our fans. And, and honestly, they think we have the best field in the country. I know that's not true, at least not every year. We try to be that. But, man, they believe it. 
And it's been fun to, fun for them to think that. I don't necessarily stop them from thinking that. Um, but our AD is, I mean, we used to, we, our football team is, I mean, and so it's just been really fun for them to see what we do and kind of what we're at. And our, let's it, take a step back first yep. to, to discuss about PR. Uh, thankfully, we've been very, very fortunate that Tim has embraced PR just as well as social media. Mm-hmm. Talk us through the, maybe the first interview that we set up and the last <laughs> one and how your comfort level at first was extremely uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> and now, hey, you know what? Realizing that you have a voice and you can help dictate, again, the perception of, of what the industry stands for, mm-hmm. uh, of yourself as an individual and a brand for, for yourself. Yeah, so interviews, so shifting gears, interviews, um, I had had a few before you guys had asked me. And then once, you know, last year was kind of a little, I, I felt like I needed to, right? And I didn't even say, I may have had just as many this year as I did last year. So it's like they haven't forgotten my phone number yet. <laughs> but the opportunity to share with whoever is asking questions about what we do as an industry is one that y'all can do because we all do it anyway right and you can and you can have a lot of fun with it and a lot of times you can dictate the way the conversation goes by how you you know answer a question right and so I usually don't get out of my comfort zone very much Um, somebody wants to talk to me about artificial turf I'll tell them look as far as I'm concerned we have them it's not my thing it's plastic grass. I don't get too excited about it. Let's talk about natural grass. That's where that's what I'm educated in, and that's where I want to go with it. And so sometimes you can dictate those hard conversations, especially when somebody's like, hey, what do you think about, you know, trying to get something out of you. Just don't go there, right? You just stay away from that stuff. Um, but interviews, the more you do, the more comfortable you get for sure. Um, and, man, I've had 20-minute, 30-minute conversations with people after kind of the interview was done just talking about our industry. Um, and if you can get... Somebody that's interviewing you that knows a little bit about the industry, it makes it a whole lot more fun. And do you feel that as a result of your work, both on PR and social, that you've elevated your brand, your value? Man, I've never thought of it personally that way. Um, I know that I'm in a unique situation where my university, my administrators, um, look to me to be the expert, right? And it definitely hasn't hurt that I've been able to um, be a part of interviews. Um, I usually will, a lot of times, um, I, like even after this conference, I'll thank them and I'll highlight a few things on what we do. But last year after um, the STMA, when, when I kind of stepped down from being president, I made sure they knew that I was super thankful for that opportunity for letting them letting me do that and just kind of highlighting some of the things that, that I was able to do that year. And so they, they understand that... Um, they think I'm really important, but obviously I'm, I'm really not. It's kind of fun. Before Tim goes and sits down, I want to embarrass him a little bit more. Perfect. Uh, do, do you guys have any questions for Tim? Because, again, don't hear it from us, but some, that, some questions that you may have from a fellow colleague. So that's a great question. I probably should have to set up my Twitter account. I know that there was um, one administrator that kind of asked me, and once he saw the content that we were putting it on, he never had an issue. But I do not. Um, they worked. There's a couple of things that we went through to get pictures and different things for our to our media people. Our RAD is really embraced the. Like, he really wants to carry our brand, right? And so, as long as it's good information, then he, they have no issue with it, and it really doesn't matter. Um, so they don't they don't have any issue with me at all doing that. So I'm I'm fortunate in that way because I'm I'm guessing you're probably not. That. Well, just a lot of things have to be cleared first. Okay. I mean, they they trust that I'll answer the questions, but yep. that's where I have a hard time. I can't put it even on my handle that I work for the Orioles, but I'll get mentioned in a lot of Orioles things, and then I'll get contacted. It's just a lot of yep. hurdles. Yeah, I don't have, I don't, I've never had any kind of hurdle that I've had to go through. Um, they, they've, they've let me, um, and, and I, again, I don't get into, like, you know, you guys are talking about controversial stuff. I stay, you know, I've, I sometimes have direct questions at me on specific things, and sometimes I just won't answer them. Um, as far as battles and those guys that, like, try to, 
I have a lot of good friends that aren't in the same necessary spotlight that I am, and they fight battles for me all the time, and I just sit and watch. It's actually kind of fun. It's like, all right, you can stop now. <laughs> like, let this guy go. You beat him up enough. Um, so that, that's kind of fun, too. Um, but, but you're right in the, in the sense that each individual organization may oper- operate differently. No. I think just like repetition is important in basketball, baseball, anything, is the more and you demonstrate, you're able to demonstrate the value that they see in you conducting that interview, the more they say, okay, you know, let's, let's let her... Um. I think they also just want to be aware. You know, if, you, if I get approached with something, and let's say we had a, a complete, like, crappy day where the field flooded and we were putting the tarp on and we get, I keep getting hits about stuff, I will let them know, hey, this is happening, maybe you can, you know, just watch for me, or is mm-hmm. there anything specific you want me to represent the organization? And I see that as an opportunity, because as soon as the, the media department is aware, they can help you help you get that message out because their platform is significantly larger and if you've got if they've got your back it's even better and it is it's 100% case by case i would say it's it's you know there's some organizations that we worked with and it took a little bit of convincing and then all of a sudden i was like oh wow this is actually bringing a lot of value and this is a very safe avenue for our organization um, but they want to know the purpose of it so if you're thinking about creating that channel social media channel or if you're thinking about doing media interviews you do have to have that conversation internally. This is why this is important. There's a purpose behind it. And as the subject matter expert, be able to convey that importance. To say, okay, this is what I want, and this is why I feel it's important to you. Because ultimately, look, we're, by human nature, we're all selfish. And if you're able to put, it, put yourself in their shoes and how it's going to help their business, the more likely they are to say, okay, go ahead. Nope, Tim. <laughs> Not yet. Have you just strictly stayed with Twitter, or is it because your organization has all of those? Are you addressing all of them, or is it a, a like a mutual so, attack for everybody? Yeah, that, I mean, for me personally, I stay with Twitter as far as being Cyclone Turf, like professional. I do have a personal Facebook, that that's where if, and I don't, I'm more of a, just a, I don't wouldn't call it trolling. I just look at Facebook. I don't really post a whole lot. My wife does plenty of that for me. But I'm just saying um, the organization side. Yeah, the organization side, there are other ones, like our, our basketball. You know, they have a lot of what the college sports are going to. They're just trying to be in front of these potential recruits all the time, right? So that's where all the videos come in. I mean, it's just nonstop. So they have all those different avenues that all the kids are looking at. I've, I've just stayed with Twitter, mostly because that's about all I can really keep up with. Um, just because of time. And a lot of times I'm really bad at, like, oh, man, I really wish I would have taken a picture of that and shown that. But um, we try to document it. It's tough because you don't want to spread yourself too thin across too many platforms. You know, I think what we've seen managing uh, STMA social media channels is, you know, primarily Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You know, and and we're going to talk about those a little bit. Um, It's a good segue. Um, It's like we planned it. Have we done? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any other questions for Tim? You sure? (laughs) Thank you, Tim. So just to follow up on your question, though, in terms of social media, you want to at least start small and then continue to build as you get comfort. So as you create a channel, you know, many of us are on Facebook. It's more of a personal platform. But if you create a fan page... But again, do one and do one very well, and then as you feel comfortable with it, look to expand it. But each is very different. What we've seen from STMA's social media channels, and, and I know Tomas has got some of the, most, the latest numbers on followers and engagement, uh, Twitter seems to be e- extremely engaging, and the growth has just been significant. But again, this is a very visual industry, so we're also thinking ahead and being proactive. Instagram is a platform that continues to grow as well. So... Um, just some initial thoughts there, but I know Tomas was going to dive into this now, too. So STMA, if you haven't already followed STMA on the variety of platforms, I'd encourage each of any, every, each and each and every one of you to do this. They are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. We recently resurrected the, the YouTube channel, uh, and the goal for this year is to provide more and more video content. Because as we recognize, we have less and less time in our day, and and we are very visual learners. So the more resources we can provide to you in video content, the more likely you are to consume it. 
Um, there we encourage you to share your posts, tag us at Field Experts. We manage the account, but we, we love seeing what you guys do and bringing you guys in as subject matter experts because when topics do come up and a reporter does talk about one or the other topic, say, hey, you know what? I've got the right person for you. Um, so please, I encourage you to uh, follow along. So some things regarding social, transitioning to social from PR. Why it's important? You have to, just like PR, when you're giving a, a media interview, social media expands your personal brand, and you become an in, in influencer within the green industry. Whether Tim likes to be uh, seen this way or not, he's taken the bull by the horns, and now is an in, uh, influencer in the green industry on social, and not even on social, anywhere, because he does great work. But he's got... I don't know. I didn't t see the last time he checked, but what do you have? Probably 7,000 followers? No, half of that. Half of that. 30, 30, 3,500, 3,600. That's, that's still a significant number. You were thinking about next year where his followers are going to be. To reach his message across a broader audience. Fostering these connections with different followers um, and showing and, and providing these behind-the-scenes Views. Hey, look at what we're doing at the at the Orioles at different facilities. Feels like they are part of, of your organization, and and again, that's all aimed at expanding your personal brand. It's important to stay current and relevant within the industry, uh, what your colleagues are doing, how you can learn from one another, and then influence at a younger audience. We ultimately want to see this industry strive in 10, 20, 30 years, and when you look at through the K through 12, when they're not really sure what to do or in, in college, first year, second year, give them an avenue for individuals considering the sports tour profession of how cool it is. Um, it's not just getting on a tractor. Look at how, frankly, I would put this industry within the STEM industry, within the STEM bucket of its science, its technology. Look at how many tools we're using uh, for the betterment of, of the world. And what's really required, going back to the PR, it's your, your willingness to get out of your comfort zone. Try something new. Don't expect that from day one when you decide to do this, you're going to have 5,000 followers and it's, it's repetition. The more you do it, uh, the more you tag individuals in the industry, the, the higher likelihood you are to get followers. Set aside time each week. So when we look at our 15-hour work days, say, look, now you're really, Glenn, Tomas, you're asking me to do one more thing? Seriously? You have to be able to invest in your personal brand. Going back to that first slide. If you don't invest the way that your owners are, are investing in their facilities, how do you expect your value to increase? And you're the only one who can do that. So set aside time. I sat in in a, in a, uh, in a seminar yesterday about self-care. How we need to be able to separate work and life balance. And Mr. McPherson said... If you're, you spend two hours a day on LinkedIn, that equates to one month each year on social. Think about taking just 10, 15 minutes of, those time, of that time and invest in your own brand. Because over the long term, it's going to help you. It's going to help you because the more and more you invest in yourself, people are going to take notice. I, I would just add to that, the word that comes to mind is accountability. We're accountable to so many things in our lives, our family, our job, all these things that, that are vying for our time. But if you hold yourself accountable and say every morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I've got a calendar invite that says from 8 to 8.30 a.m., I'm focused on my brand. And it could be as simple as doing a research online to see what news stories are out there that are specific to, to what uh, is going on in your community or what's going on in the sports turf industry, scheduling social media posts, just, just reviewing, just going through social media and just seeing what's out there and engaging and conversing and following relevant accounts and seeing what those local media reporters are doing. You have to hold yourself accountable. Think about it with your job. If you didn't hold yourself accountable with certain things for your job, you're not going to perform at a higher level. For your brand, if you don't hold yourself accountable to actually scheduling time in your calendar each week, I do it personally. It's something that's, that's critical. So it, it's uncomfortable. It's a change. It, it won't be easy. But find the time to plug in each week, whatever you can plug in, and then hold yourself accountable to it. Make it routine. 
past president Jeff Salmon said something at a conference three years ago that has stuck with us and we've really latched onto it tremendously is that sports star professionals are directors of first impressions. You only have a first impression once. When someone walks in through the hallway to the Iowa State field, what's the first thing they see? It's the field. When you go into a, a parks and rec, the first thing that the kids go see is the field. You want to be able to showcase that asset through photos, videos, infographics, because people on social will gravitate towards images. And that's your pride and joy. So if, if it's not you taking photographs, ask the media department, hey, can you send me some stuff, some beauty shots that you took um, of our facility? Because, again, directors of first impressions. And let that sink in of how important and valuable the way it looks. And we're really proud of the way it looks. So let's showcase that through our social channels. And then the, the, the development of a brand voice on channels to, again, capture that authenticity of yourself. You are the only, take control of your brand voice, your brand image. And the way you do that is stick to your tone. Stick to your lane. As you're talking on social, on PR, people will get to know you, even though they may not know you personally, of what he or she is about because you're always talking about the same thing. You're sticking to the same talking points that you've set out for yourself. Yes. Sure. Great question. Do you know the average attention span of an individual? <laughs> what did you say? For high school kids, about 13 seconds. It's, it, on long. average, it's about three to five seconds. So it's shocking that there's a lot of people still here. <laughs> um, but so if you recognize the length, and number one is video content. Always outperforms photo content across every platform because we can't sit still. We want to keep watching it while we run into a wall. Um, but the shorter, the better. You get to the point, and that's why when, you, and when we produce videos on the YouTube channel, you have to catch their attention in the first five or six seconds of the video and think about your own <coughs> habits. Think of what performs best. If you don't uh, enjoy what you're seeing the first five seconds, now you're done. You keep going on with your day. So you need to be able to get straight into the point, and again, this is where the media department can help you because they, they live and breathe it every day. But video content and short and sweet. That, uh, and, and I'd say tagging relevant accounts to your message. So it could be organization. It could be a media outlet. It could be whatever is germane to that topic. And then hashtags. Uh, you know, There's no real kind of amount of hashtags you should use, but certainly look at ones that are being frequently used in your industry or frequent to that particular message. And, and insert those into your posts as well. Again, it seems very simple, but so many times we're posting social, we're maybe missing opportunities because we're not tagging the right people, we're not using the right hashtags, we're not taking it just one step further and saying, let me take a video or a photo. To length of video, I would say on the shorter end of it. You know, if you get past 15 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, it, it really becomes hard to, to, uh, to continue to keep them engaged. Yes? See, we're proactive. And it's, and it's much better to have four 15-second uh, videos that you can put out than one 60-second video. It 100% will perform better. So Buffalo Social Resources, uh, exploring editorial opportunities with STMA social channels, including Q&As, takeovers. And here's the hint. We community manage the social channels. You all may know that, but we have it on our phones all of the social channels, we're always looking for unique content. Some of the best content in terms of engagement that we've had with STMA channels is when an individual conducts a Q&A with us, somebody, a leader from the industry, somebody actually takes over the accounts for a day. How many of you all have seen those on STMA social channels? Right, it gives that behind the scenes look at this is what's actually being done. This is what's actually at being asked of 
sports turf uh, managers within this industry. And so we are always looking for those types of opportunities, emailing us or sending us a direct message on these social channels. Hey, I, I'd like to make myself available. That is an easy step into building your brand. Then taking that content and showcasing it with others in the industry, within your organization, that becomes very important. The ability to retweet or repost user-generated content. So as you build your own social uh, channels and you start getting content, make sure you're tagging STMA. Make sure you're using very uh, similar hashtags that you'll see are used within STMA social channels. And we will engage. We will converse. We will retweet. We will repost. So don't forget to add those things. And that gives you additional visibility within the STMA social channels. Uh, we also, from time to time, do supply campaign toolkits, infographics, and other industry images. We did some around the conference here. There's other moments throughout the year, different contests, where we create visuals within our own team that then we didn't uh, disperse to the industry to just be able to copy, save, and put that into your posts. Um, and then lastly, uh, offering tutorials, trends, best practices to STMA members. So STMA is, uh, STMA's social media content is evolving every day, and as it evolves, so does the social media channels. So we have to stay on top of what are the different algorithms, different trends that are taking place in Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter that can be helpful to the industry. And what should they know for their own personal channels? And so being able to offer that type of information throughout the year can hopefully continue to educate you to be sharper in using social media. So going back to some of the success stories um, that Glenn mentioned just a few seconds ago is since we are on, frankly, all of the platforms, there's a different voice for each. Twitter is 24 hours a day, keep going, keep going. Facebook is more designed to create a conversation. LinkedIn is geared towards the professional growing your brand and Instagram is very visual. These are some of the examples that, um, through field experts, created great engagement. And we wanted to open up here to answer a few questions. And first, could you raise your hand if you are active on social media? How many are thinking about creating channels? or expanding into new channels. Okay. I think one thing that you've probably seen from today's presentation is a lot of what we're talking about with PR and social, it kind of crossed over, right? And, and we continue to see that trend happening in the marketing industry. Uh, as media members become higher profile, they become influencers within social media, those things be continue to become tighter and tighter. So it's easy to break those two things apart and think about them separately. But challenge yourself to think about them together. Because ultimately, a PR story then gets pushed out on social and vice versa. So being available for media interviews, but also being active on social media, it's important to do both, not just one or the other. And it ties back to what the gentleman on the TED Talk said. These are all designed to increase your brand. And as you increase your brand reputation, your value increases alongside it. And it's not a myth. It's not hypothetical. It's completely correlated. The more people have, uh, regard you in a higher esteem, the more they're going to pay for your services. Uh, because not only it's what you bring to the table, but all of your network behind you who trust you um, into, into, the, into the true expert. For those who didn't raise their hand, that they don't have social, aren't interested in, in looking at ones, what are some of the tallest barriers that prevent you from tackling social? Time? Time. Time. I mean, I... They, they want to control the message. I mean, there's no question, right? They, they, there has to be a level of trust that needs to be built. So, you know, continue to at least have those conversations internally. Because it, it, it will take time. I mean, we, we've seen it. I mean, initial conversations with some ST members who are part of municipalities all of a sudden, they have like two or three colleagues that are listening in on the phone call, and, and we're like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. We're, we're here to help. But it takes time. It, it really does take time. And, again, allow us, if we can help in that department, allow us to, to share, you know, the purpose of it and also the value it can bring. And a way to circumvent that is 
if they want to control a message, if you're snapping a picture or, or have a thought, send it to them. Hey, can you post this? Um, let them. If you know, if you want to control it, by all means. But that doesn't mean you're going to prevent me from sharing my stories because it's. I'm sure it's real important what what you have to say to them and to the community as well. So if they want to channel that conversation through their platform, so be it. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of, you know, how do you create potentially a testing ground or a pilot for social media? Is that kind of... Right. Yeah, so one thing that and it's actually a fairly simple way to think about it is um, creating a closed Facebook fan group. And with that, you basically invite who you want into that conversation. So it could be, it could be individuals within your local STMA chapter. It could be... Uh, you know, alumni from your turf program that you went to. It could be people within your community. And invite them to then participate in those conversations. They become closed conversations, but then you're allowed to bounce ideas off of them. I'm thinking about posting about X, Y, and Z. And usually those are very direct feedback that you'll get. You know, I really don't think it's probably an area that you should go into because of this particular reason. And so I've seen that with some alumni groups and some other industry associations where they create closed Facebook fan pages and it helps to control the, the conversation. And then begin to think, is this something that we want to explore to make it a little bit bigger and make it a little bit more public? And in, in addition to that, I would say that when we discuss what's required to create your own brand voice within social, within PR, also know who's your audience, who's your target audience. And you're speaking to someone totally different than the 15 or 18-year-olds or the 13 or 15-year-olds. Um, so even if they may have some reactions, you're talking to someone else. And they're go- if, because it's a public forum and, and nothing escapes the Internet, people will comment, people will see it, all types. But your target audience is someone else. So I wouldn't be um, swayed from, from comments who com- that come from individuals who personally you don't care about. Yeah, you don't want to be the lost luggage department of uh, the community, right? Where you just everybody's upset, yeah. And there's never you, a good day, right? But you know what? Actually, a, a lot of airlines, particularly Delta, have recognized that individuals communicate through different channels mm-hmm. and have invested tremendously in social media community managers to respond to requests yeah. directly there. Rather than calling a 1-800 number, they'll just respond to you directly via Twitter, Facebook. Mm-hmm. We have... Time for maybe one or two more questions, if there are any. The number, the number one recommendation is call us at Buffalo. We are a resource for you. We have frequently asked questions that are tough questions that may be answered and responses. Whenever we provide or set up a media interview, we ask the reporter, give us the questions so we vet what the questions are. We'll draft some responses for you and work together uh, on how to spin it. Um, but absolutely, absolutely use us as a resource. And Tim made a great point, too. You know, the, the media member shouldn't always control how the story is going to go, right? You should go into that media interview saying, this is what I hope to get out of it. Because ultimately, that's where you can get yourself in a little bit of trouble where the story starts to get spun another way. And you're like, how did this get out of control? So understanding what talking points we would recommend what your organization recommend, and also what you would recommend as the expert, right? We have to take that into consideration. And then being able to massage those talking points, prepare for them, and then understanding going into the interview, they may ask a certain question. How can you pivot to what you want to get out of the interview? And I'll give you, I'll share it with an example. Just a few months ago, uh, Estadio Azteca in Mexico suffered, and probably everyone, the majority of you saw the, the field damage. And they reached out to us, because one of the individuals of the, of the construction is an STMA member. And we coordinated an interview with BBC, with a few others, and we identified, that, and they were placing the blame on him. This is the reason why, because the install didn't take time to, uh, enough time for, for, for the new turf to grow in. And after knowing what the facts were, we made sure that the media and everyone knew that it was a much larger issue, that they had drainage issues, other things that he wasn't a part of. So saying, hey, don't blame it on me. They actually had, um, organizationally, they hadn't invested in a few key things like irrigation and and drainage. That was the reason why the field was the way it was. Um, So really making sure that the media members know the facts before they start generating their own conclusions.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's a good example of one who was a terrible, and, and they were trying to throw uh, this individual and STMA under the bus, saying, no, 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 let's, let's get the facts straight. And they did. Any other questions? Any other? Okay, well, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you to Tim as well.